Using Xtex materials with Keyshot is an easy process, but there are a couple of things to note when it comes to scaling and mapping. So let's go through the entire process here. First of all, uh, we have our Xtex captured material, which is in the U3M format. So I have a U3M file here, as well as a folder with the actual texture maps. Now, you of course are free to manually bring these into Keyshot as needed, but using the U3M file here, we'll be able to easily import the material and have it automatically uh, plug into the correct nodes in the material graph. So let's move that out of the way. And uh, the project that I have open right now has the, the scene unit set correctly, and the geometry that I'm using is also set uh, to the correct scale so that everything uh, matches the real world. So that's very important if you're going to follow the process that I'm about to um, in setting the proper scale of your material. First thing we need to do though is import our material. So over here in the library, in the materials section, I have a folder here where I'm going to import my material. I'll just choose the import option here navigate to where that U3M file is and open. Then you will see it is automatically added to my material library here. So I can now drag this over onto my object. Now I know what the actual material looks like. This is not the proper scale. Um, it may import, depending on the version of the U3M file, it may import at the proper scale. But if it is not, then you can follow the next steps to adjust this and also make sure that it's mapped correctly. So if I double click on my object here with the material applied, I can then come over to the right and choose to open my material graph. And you can see that um, Keyshot has already taken that U3M file and plugged in my texture maps. Now it does not automatically add in your displacement map. Uh, this material that I'm using doesn't have a displacement map, but even if it did, it would not automatically add that. So that's the only thing you would have to manually do, which I could go through by just adding in a displacement node. And then usually I like to just duplicate one of these other maps here, connect it, and then I can come up here to my texture map properties and then just navigate to that textures folder that was right next to your U3M file. And again, if you have a displacement map, you could select that and then your displacement map would be selected and uh, connected properly. And then you can adjust your displacement settings. I don't have displacement for this material, so I'm just going to remove that. All right, so let's look at the scale option first. So I'll double click this top texture map here, just to make sure it's selected. And then let's look at a couple things in the texture map properties. So first of all, the default mapping type is box. We'll leave that right now, but then we'll switch it to UV after this to show the steps needed if you're using UV mapping. Then we'll move down and look at the scale mode. So I know the real world material doesn't match this. This is way too large. And if yours looks too large, then the odds are you're using the latest version of the U3M file format, which has actually switched from the previously used centimeters for the units of measurement to millimeters. So all that means is that your decimal point here is just one place to the left, uh, one place further to the left than it should be. So if I delete that and put, move that decimal point over and press enter, then this is actually the proper scale. And then if we double check each of these other texture maps, you can see the DPI setting is correct for all of those. Now, if you're using box projection, then you could stop here. Uh, if you're using UV mapping, which this object does actually have UV mapping, then you can follow the next step that I'm going to do as well. So I'm going to, again, just double click to select this top map and choose instead of box, I'm going to choose UV and it will reset my settings here. But it is at the proper, it is using the UV map. So um, I'm not getting any weird seams or artifacts where that box projection is kind of merging uh, together at the sides. So I'm now using the UV map as I want, but I wanna select DPI again. 
and I'll just put in, I don't know if you, you may not um, be able to see it very well, but uh, knowing this material, I can see that my, once I switch to DPI, it actually, I'm having some weird overlap between the maps. So we're gonna fix that in a minute as well. But I'm gonna set my DPI to, again, 1100, because I know that that's what my material is at. So now this texture map is at the correct scale using uh, DPI with the UV mapping. You can see it's still UV mapped up here at the top. But if I double click on my next map here, this metalness, you can see it's still set to UV, but the DPI is correct. So I just need to go through and make sure that DPI is selected for each of these maps. And now if I close this, we can zoom in here a little bit more. Uh, we now have a really nice, correctly mapped and correctly scaled X-Text material here in Keyshot.